I say hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, I yield myself as a verse to you this morning. I flow in the spirit of this message. Holy Spirit, find in me a vessel. Find me a find in me a channel through which the rivers will flow out. Anoint these lips of clay that they will declare forth the counsels of the Lord. Let a, a, a new atmosphere of possibilities be created this morning. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Let the confused receive direction. Let the depressed be lifted. For Mandela, I pray for everyone watching us on the live stream that the same anointing at work on this ground shall be at work as you listen to this word message. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated. like to welcome everyone to the first service today. Uh, we are trusting God that what he wants to be accomplished shall be accomplished. Can I hear a name from someone? Now we announced in the course of the week that the theme for the month of August 2023 is I am manifesting my love nature. Can somebody repeat that? Can you say it like a minute? I am manifesting my love nature. Glory to God. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2. He said according Second Peter chapter 1 2 uh, 3 to 4. Let me just 3, three then we'll read for his 3 says according to his divine, divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us glory and virtue. And in verse number four he says he, he says, through he has given us ex great and exceeding precious promises that by this we might become partakers of the divine nature. So now, love, and I'm going to go into details this month as we look at the love of God, that the love of God is the core nature of God. Praise the Lord. I am manifesting my love nature. Now, listen to this. It is the manifestation of our love nature that will make the world a better place to stay. Yeah. It is the manifestation of our love nature that will make the world a better place to stay. But permit me also to say that it is the manifestation of our love nature that will make the church a, wall, a welcoming environment to hang around. Some people have not hung around the church because they have not seen the manifestation of the love nature. Actually, I will tell you the truth today. The reason many people run away from churches is because there is no manifestation of the love of nature. Because actually, for your information, people don't reject love. It is the desire of every man to love and to be loved. So everywhere there is a manifestation of that love nature, people look at that environment as welcoming and a better place to hang around. Listen to this, love has the power to change an environment. Love has the power 
power to change an environment. Now, do you see, do you see that when the first flood came, hmm, let me tell you, remember the reason why the flood came, there was so much evil in the world. And the, the flood came, although the flood came, now look at this, because now, okay, like, can we go to Genesis chapter 6? Glory to God, amen and amen. Genesis chapter 6. Genesis now, now verse number five and six. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, Genesis six five and, and six. Shakuta paradia. And God saw that the wickedness of man. Somebody said the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the force of his heart was evil continually. And he repented Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowl of the air, for it repented me that I have made him. Now, if you look at the flood, the flood was like an antidote to wipe away evil. Are we together now? As are we together this morning? I want you to be with me because I'm, I'm laying an introduction for what we'll be teaching this man. Now, but it's, the flood came, but after the flood came, evil men still existed. We, we have evil men like Manasseh and all those evil people. But then God said, I'm going to introduce myself. Listen to this. The introduction of love is the introduction of God himself. If there are good men on the earth today, it's because God introduced himself as love. So in uh, beginning from this service, I will be teaching a teaching series titled, The Believer's Walk of Love. The Believer's Walk of Love. In the ways of God's servant, our mentor, who's going to be the Lord, E.W. Kenyon of blessed memory, he said, if love becomes the dominating force in families, there will be no divorce cases at the court. That's what E.W. Kenyon said. If love be the dominating force in marriages, there will not be a single divorce case at the court. Now, now, by design, marriage is supposed to be an institution of love. But because now marriage has been turned to something else today, that is why men have even come with an evil philosophy where they tell us that marriage is a necessary evil. How can evil be necessary in the first place? That tells you how corrupted the mind of man is that God designed marriage as an institution of love. Man now calls it a necessary evil. It's an evil that is necessary. That's madness in the first place. The believers walk of love. Now, why are we going to be talking of walk? Because the truth of the matter is, look at this. He says, now, look at that's, that's, that's Romans. Romans, he says, the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Spirit of God. Is that Romans 5? Let's go there, Jesus. The love of God has been shed in our hearts by the Holy Ghost who is given unto us. Can, I, can somebody say amen to that? I, I say can I hear an amen to that? The love of God has been shed in our hearts by the Holy Ghost who is given unto us. As Romans 5 5. And hope makes not ashamed. 
because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. So, so you see that every believer has the love of God in him or her. Hello. I say hello. So every believer has the love of God in him or her. So what we are talking about now, we are not talking about acquiring love. That seven steps to acquiring the love of God. No. We are not. You can't acquire what you already have. He says the love of God has been shared in our heart by the Holy Ghost. Can somebody say the love of God is right in my heart? Yeah. Somebody is asking, where can I find the love of God? Say you have found it, brother. I am the location of the love of God. The love of God is in me. So we are not talking about acquiring the love. We are talking about walking in the love that is already in us. You are not with me. I say we are not talking about acquiring love. We are talking about walking in the love that is already in us. The believers walk of love. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Do you know that many of you, you have chased people out of your life who could have been a blessing to you because you didn't walk in love. You chase them, you kick them out of your life. They believe us walk of love. Now, God's servant can take him to talk about a story about a lady that had an issue, a married lady, with his uh, um, mother-in-law. You know that, you know that mother-in-law and daughter-in-law in that fight. So now, uh, she, she came to Kenneth and said, "I hate my mother-in-law. I hate my mother-in-law." So then he said, "Okay, okay, you hate her." So he just told her that, can you close your eyes? And he said, I hate my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law. I hate. Then he said, what is happening? He said, there is something that is scratching me in my heart. He said, that is the love of God. Mm. You are allowing your flesh to overtake your spirit. When you are walking in hatred, you are allowing your flesh to overtake your spirit. And any time you allow your flesh to overtake your spirit, you run into trouble. Hatred, someone's hatred, is allowing your flesh to overtake your spirit. Because see, love is a virtue of the spirit. He says, for the fruit of the spirit is love. So love is a virtue of the spirit. Love is not a fleshly virtue. Love can find expression in the flesh, but it's not a fleshly virtue. Love is a virtue of the spirit. Glory to Jesus. As a glory to Jesus. So I want us to understand that, see, our relationship with God is a walk. Somebody say, oh, a walk. A walk. And Enoch walked with God. It's a walk. A walk describes something that is a life. Now that walk with God involves several key areas of our spiritual life. For instance, we see that in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Someone say walk. Walk. Walking with God. Walking with God. So there is a walk by faith. We walk by faith. But today we'll be talking about walking in love. Walking in love. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of First Corinthians chapter 13 and uh, catch a picture of the three vital forces of life. 
Someone say three vital forces. There are three vital forces of life. Three. Let's go to First Corinthians chapter 13. There are three vital forces of life. Three of them. There are so many forces, but these are three vital forces of life. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Glory to God. And now, now 1 Corinthians 13, 13. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now abided faith, hope, love. These three. Somebody say these three. But the greatest of these is love. There abide three forces. Somebody say three forces. Three forces. So there are three vital forces of the spirit now captioned as faith, hope, love. Now look at this. The Christian faith, as we call it, amplifies faith among many things. That is why, you know, actually, uh, uh, we are called Anto Kulubirida. You understand? People of faith. But the Apostle Paul is telling us that faith is powerful, hope is powerful, but love is supreme above. And actually, I will show you the supremacy of love over faith. Faith is a force of the spirit. Hope is a force of the spirit. Love is the force of the spirit. And now the apostles say the greatest of this is love. So in this first service, I will labor by the help of the spirit to show you the supremacy of love. How essential is the love of God. Glory to God. Actually, I don't know if you may be able to be able to get a soft copy. You should be able to get a, that book by Kennedy again. Love the way to victory. I have it on my iPad. I wanted to read it last night, but I couldn't because my iPad couldn't charge up. But I believe that brethren, like the Tawinas, I think they are very fast in getting those books. Just drop it on a, on a, drop it on a, a flames online. Love the way to victory. That book will bless your life. And actually, thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. May God help us. I say, may God help us. You know, in that book, there is a chapter where can Kenthigan talked about that love, walking in love will help you to live long. Now, in the 1940s, there was a movement in America called the Healing Revival. Where there were a lot of ministers rose with gifts of the Spirit. So, there were so many. Everywhere, there were healing meetings. Everywhere. They were and actually, what had happened, actually, let me just give you a background. There was a man called Franklin Hall. Franklin Hall was disturbed that he couldn't see the manifestations of the spirit in the body of Christ. So Franklin Hall, what he did, he started a series of fastings. What they would do, they would fill a stadium with believers just fasting. I'm praying. Around 1930-1940. So they prayed and prayed. So at, at the verge of 1945, boom! There was what is called a healing revival broke out in America. There were a lot of healing ministers. This, this minister is healing people of cancer. This one, oh man, now the blind, it was all over the place. So, because it was a movement, so 
Those ones that were notable in that move, most of them are written in the book called God's Generous. Men like Jacko, F. F. Bosworth, T. L. Osborne, Kenneth Egan, Oro Robas, they were all in that movement. So, 120 of them, they formed an organization called the Hearing Voice. And there was one man leading that movement who, whose name was Gordon Lindsay. Gordon Lindsay was a minister, but he was a good administrator. So the, Gordon Lindsay gathered these 120 servants of God together. He gathered all of them together. And they were having meetings. They would meet together. It's called the, the healing voice. Now, the problem among these men was... They were walking in the gifts of the spirit, but they were not walking in love. So this is what happened. The, the, the minister that caught the revelation of walking in love, like T.L. Osborne, um, Kenneth Tegan, all robbers, told these young folks that, guys, we must walk in love. Otherwise, we may not all be around. And look at this. By 2000, most of them were dead. So you can walk in the gifts of the spirit yet you're not walking in love. <laughs> but look at this man. Hagen lived to be 86. T.L. around 80. Or Robert around 89. Walking in love will help you to live long. Thank you Holy Spirit. And that's a subject for another day. Hey, Tawina has already thrown that book on Flames Online. It's already there. I told you. <laughs> we have high tech guys in the church. They just give you, they have everything at their fingertips. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Powerful book. It is going to bless the, your life. It is also going to bless this church. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Love the way to victory. Back in it again. Now let's turn our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5 2. Ephesians 5 2. The believer's walk of love. So these are not love acquisition services. We are talking about how we can walk in that love. You know, when you say things like, people don't love me, you, do you know what they're trying to say? When you say, people don't love me, do you know what they're trying to say? The people that don't love you are a reflection of you. You also don't love. You didn't, you didn't hear what I just said. People don't love me. The people you are saying they don't love you, they are a reflection of you because you too don't love them. So they know this guy doesn't, doesn't love us. But he's looking for our love. You know, human beings are very clever. I say, do you know human beings are very clever? A human being will know that this one doesn't love me, but wants me to love him. So I will show him. <laughs> we, human beings are a dangerous species. <laughs> this one doesn't what? But he wants me to what? So I, I will show him who I am. <laughs> <laughs> he wants me to love him but he doesn't love me so I'll show you <laughs> Ephesians 5 verse 2 are you there? I wouldn't want to live read long but that's it you see it's a I'll walk and it means it's coming from somewhere yeah it's a continuous I'll walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us as a offering, Jesus, and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Senimo Radimo Shakatalaba. I pray for you today. May your heart be awakened to the love of God. I say, may your heart be 
awakened to the love of God. I say, may your heart be awakened to the love of God. It's a walk in love. As Christ has also loved us. So listen to this. A walk in love does not start with you. It starts with Christ. You are not with me. As a walk in love does not start with you. It starts with Christ. You walk in love because Christ has loved you. The problem is that we try to walk in love in the energy of the flesh. So you begin to mention, I am love. I walk in love. The next thing you are disappointed with someone. Love has also disappeared. Because you are trying to manifest a divine nature in the energy of the flesh. Because love is a divine nature, you see. And let me tell you the truth. If you want to grow in your work, in your love work, eh? You do you know where you want to start? You do you know the best place to start? The best place to start your growth in walking in love is to start with those you hate. Don't start with those that love you. Start with those that hate you. And I've seen something else. I think I talked about it. I talked about it. Uh, what was I sharing with? Okay, I was sharing with some pastors, yes. But it was a personal conversation. That if I know that you are not a giver, this is what I will start doing. I will start giving to you. That's what I do. If I know this one is not a what? You know what I start? I will start giving to you. Because it is love that activates love. <laughs> because listen to this. Every believer has a giving nature. It's just that that giving nature is dormant. So but when I look at the man, and I, you are a stingy person. You are not a giver. You are a stingy person. You know what I'm doing? I am continuing to inhibit that love nature in the person. Are we together right now? Yeah. Do you know that even people that are not born again, they have the nature of love in them? It's just that it is corrupt. You think when your MP is giving you money, 10,000 every house, he loves you? It is a love, but that love is a corrupted love because he is looking for your vote. You know, in Kawalia, there was one MP before the election. He went about distributing chickens. How can somebody just come to your house and give you chicken? And he doesn't know you. <laughs> you, can, are you, are you not even suspicious? You say, oh, this man loves us. He doesn't love you. <laughs> He's looking for your vote. <laughs> Glory! So they walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself. Some say given himself. Listen to this. The height of love is sacrifice. The height of love is what? You know, I've, got, I've, got, I've come across, you know, those, you know, those young ladies who are not married. Who complained that the man doesn't give me anything else? Sometimes you say, I oh, know it's because women like money. It's not so. Women doesn't like money. It's not an issue. The issue is if the man loves you, he will sacrifice something for you. Yes. You didn't hear what I just said. If a man genuinely loves you, he will sacrifice something for you. Because love is sacrificial. Genuine love is what? Sacrificial. So he said, he said, as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us. Someone said, given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God. It was love that drove Christ to give himself as a sacrifice. Oh, 
What am I saying this morning? Walking in love is a possibility. And I'm telling you the truth today, beloved. That the beauty and the glory of our walk with God is in love. The beauty and the glory of our walk with God is in love. I'm in love with Jesus. I'm in love. Oh. <laughs> glory to you. I'm in love with Jesus. I'm in love. Oh. <laughs> Do you know something else? You can't be genuinely in love with God and not be genuinely in love with man. So I'm seeing a lot of things changing in this church this month as a minister on the love of God. Now okay, quickly, let's just look at two or three things. It's a broad subject about how essential is it to walk in love? That's when we need to start. How important is it to walk in love? How, why not just live my life and mind my business? And oh, and we were in Zuzu, and uh, now God servant Apostle Vitumbiko said something else. He said there was a time he was having a lot of people in his church, but he was struggling financially. And uh, one day he went to pray, and God told him, He said, You are, you are, an, he said, you are a problem. He said, The way you lack, the reason you are in lack is because you are an anointed stingy man. And you see, a stingy man is one who is struggling to walk in love. The one who, who takes bread, you know, bread. And cover himself with a blanket and be eating the bread. He is struggling to walk in love. As a parent, you buy that big boat of sobo and you keep it in your bedroom. You are children, you go and buy jewelry juice and dilute five liters. You can be drinking this one. Your stinginess is a sign that you are struggling to walk in love. How can you be eating bread and you cover yourself blanket? And your voice cannot be heard. Even the chewing cannot be heard. You are a master, my friend. How essential is it to walk in love? Number one, <laughs> and I'm confused here but God will help my confusion now look at this love is God personified and God is love personified that's where my confusion was love is God what personified Love is God personified. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of John Comani. First John. Mm. I see a lot of things shifting this month. This church will become a better church. Somebody say amen to that. Yeah. I'm in love. With Jesus, I'm in love. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's a dawning of a new day for someone here. First John. First John 4.16. Let's start from there. First John 4.16. I'm in love. With Jesus, I'm in love. I am a shakata bayande katoza siya. Sir, love is better manifested than taught. Actually, the manifestation of love is stronger than the teaching of love. 
I'm in love. Oh. With Jesus, I'm in love. Oh. First John 4, 16. Are you there? And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. Someone say God is love. God is love and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. So you see, walking in love is walking in God. That is why you can never destroy a man who is walking in love. Because the man who is walking in love is walking in God. That man is indestructible. Because the love of God is indestructible. God, I talked about the three greatest forces. Being faith, hope, and love. Are we together? But do you know that God is not hope? And God is not faith. But God is love. That is the greatness of love that it is God personified. When you say I, when you say, I love you, you are trying to say I God you. Because God is love. And love is God. Walking in love is walking in God. So, I don't know where you walk, but the best place to walk is to walk in love. Walk in love. So, number one, love is essential because when you are walking in love, you are walking in God. Number two, love is the love is the central theme of salvation. Love is the what central theme of salvation. So any discussion of salvation outside of love is a waste and a hypocritical theological discussion. of salvation outside of love it is a theological theoretical hypocritical discussion how can men sit down together and be talking about love when they don't love anybody like how do you, it's how do we let the love of God in you you say you can't you love God whom you cannot see, but you don't love man who can whom you can see. How do we let the love of God in you? You are fake. That's what the apostle saying. You can't say you love God and you hate man. And you already heard that any hatred towards man, he said is murder. You are a murderer when you love when you hate man. Hatred, listen, the reason my wife was telling me. That there was a girl in South Africa, a lady. You know, in South Africa, they have good life. Even here, we have them. Life insurance policy. So, you see, his relatives had, like, you are, you are the firstborn, and all the other siblings, maybe four of them, they have good life insurance policies. That when they, they, this lady was killing them one by one to take their money, to take their insurance policy. That's telling you what hatred can do. That's why there are people who practice witchcraft in the church. Because hatred has overtaken them. Actually, for your information, a witch is not a, 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 the one who flies in the night. A witch is somebody who hates somebody who calls a brother in church. Love is the central theme of salvation. Now look at this. The whole plan of salvation is founded on love. The whole what? The whole plan of salvation is founded on love. For God so loved. Sir, if our journey does not start with love, we are going somewhere. For God so loved. Sir, the whole salvation started with love. For God so loved. Then the journey started. 
For God so loved the world. Question, was the, nah, was the world lovable? No. The world was not lovable. Now, that's why I told, I told you that if you want to grow in love, the first place to start, start with the people you hate. I was listening to a preacher and he was saying that you know, people are saying that China will take over the world and he says something. He says, China can't take over the world because Chinese are selfish. Are we together right now? In America, it's easier to stay in America than in China. So you go to America and the, the preacher said even America is good at accommodating its enemies. That's why in America you find Russian Americans. Chinese Americans. So, black Americans. So, if you go to America, you find everybody that hates Americans, they are in America. They hate America, but where are they? Because America embraces everybody. So, if you understand, that is where on their money they wrote in God we trust. That is why China can never overtake America. Because China is selfish. America sent a visionary. America sent missionaries to us. China is sending entrepreneurs to us. All that is important. But I want you to understand here that the whole plan of salvation starts with love. Sir, if we are not walking in love, we are wasting our time talking about salvation. Just, we are just trying to do a, a theological debate. Beloved, I've come to talk on the dynamics and the mystery and eschatology of salvation. Somebody shall fire. fire. <laughs> Let me finish here. You boy, you cannot deceive me. <laughs> He said, while we were yet sinners, Christ loved us and died for us. So the whole essence of salvation. Now let's go to Ephesians. Uh, and this is introduction, so I've tried. I'm in love with Jesus. I'm in love Shakatalaba. Ephesians chapter 2. That's why I'm going to stop for this service. This I've given the introduction here. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians 2. Glory to God. Is the Lord ministering to someone this morning? I say, Is the Lord ministering to someone this morning in the church? Now look at this. He said from 3 4. He said, Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, of the mind, of the flesh and of the mind. And we are by nature children of, of wrath, even unto others. But look at this verse number 4. But God. Someone said, But God. Our story changed here. Who is rich in mercy for his great love? Someone says, Great love. We are with he loved us, even when we were dead in sins. He has quickened us together with Christ. By grace, you are saved. Sir, even we were yet sinners, God showed us his great love. I tell you today, there is nobody who hates you, who doesn't look like you, who is not going to change by your love. Sir, love has the power to change the hearts of men. I've seen it in my life. I say love has the power to change the heart of men. The one who took a knife at the back to stab you, when the fragrance of love is released, that knife will be dropped down. Rise up on your feet. Love has the power to change the hearts of men. 
Lord, help me by your spirit to walk in love. That's a prayer. Lift your voice and pray a prayer. Sharandi bosakata la barada. Radiba shakateri manalabara. Rami sati garama shatala barada ba. Shanti garaba satala barada ba. Riba shatala mayagada ba. Help me to walk in love. In 